and and <laughs> <laughs> you might need those. <laughs> So should we actually talk about space? I'm Ben and I'm the project manager of the Binner Space Program. And I am Renee, I'm the deputy director of the Space Science and Technology Centre. We are here on Earth. We're here on Earth, uh, in particular the location also known as Curtin University. The, the co conversation we're going to have here is about like why should we do space? Um, so why should we do space for me has to start with why should humanity do space? It shouldn't be begin with the individual, it should begin with what is human about going to space? And I think that for as long as we've been human, we've explored the boundaries of our world and we've pushed out past the unknown horizon because there's stuff out there that you can't discover by staying put. Um, we don't know what solutions we'll find by exploring space. Um, and that's, that's one of the reasons that we should definitely look to space. I think that's a really exciting adventure that we want people to feel like it's for them and mm. that they can so it's not Jump just for space nerds and engineers? Totally. Totally. Well, the reasons why you might have science fiction books or really love gorgeous movies about space or really enjoy lying out in your backyard or going camping and looking at the stars, I think even that is enough to just make people feel something particularly special about being a human and having the ability to look up and beyond and ponder the universe. Mm. and that the things that we can build, the questions that we can ask and the problems that we can solve, you know, that's our extension as humans into the unknown. And I think that's breathtakingly beautiful and something that we all can take a part in. I think that's why Apollo touched so many people because the moon is just so obvious. You, especially before cities and lights, you couldn't ignore the moon. It was there. It was as much part of ancient mythology as the sun. Sun and the moon have mm. been part of our story since before we knew we were telling stories. Mm. So yeah, I think that's right. I think you know, space is just naturally inspiring. When we go to space, we have a different perspective as well. So not only are we extending ourselves literally, um, the, the the fingerprints um, and the heartbeats of, of humanity onwards, but we're able to kind of turn around and see ourselves mm. and our planet. And that was a huge part. Like Apollo, Apollo had an incredible part to play in being able to look back um, at our Earth from a completely different vantage and truly understand how fragile, how fabulous mm. our existence is. Um, on literally this tiny blue dot just floating in the middle of effectively nothing and now today by taking technologies uh, and asking questions and turning that back around we're able to understand um, we're getting data about our climate and we're understanding more and more how we're able to actually help solve some of the really really big questions and these are existential questions and I think that's another thing we can go to space to ask some of the grandest and greatest questions, these existential questions, and help us solve potentially existential problems. We've got a fragile planet. Like I said, we see the pale blue dot and we go, wow, we're small, we're fragile. That's led to so much of the questions about global warming and the future of the planet and sustainability. Those things are stemming out from our knowledge of, of our situation in the solar system. From the ground, it's not obvious that things are uh, taking a turn for the worse. But from space you can see, oh we have a problem, now we need to fix it. Mm. Um, and I think maybe that's a, a good segue into why should uh, countries be involved and it's responsibility. It's, it's, you know, you can't be part of the solution if you're not engaging in it. It's not enough to sit back and watch. Um, we all have to put our best foot forward and, and protect our planet. Um, there's lots of other reasons, of course. Um, <laughs> it makes money. <laughs> it, it does make money. Um, it's good for the economy it's and it's jobs. And not you'll get a really cool job. Yeah. Like. <laughs> and I'm an engineer, so one of the reasons I think going to space is important is because it challenges us to try things that we would never try on Earth, and often that leads to solutions for things on Earth that we would never have tried on Earth. Um, and there's so many of them, there's so many examples of things that, that have been done in space uh, that now we use on the ground. Uh, medical procedures are heavily influenced by space technology. Uh, obviously, um, we use space for navigation now, which is something we couldn't do before. Uh, no more floating a wooden disc in a bowl of water. <laughs>
although you should try that. Uh. The, other, the other really important thing for countries to get involved in this is that it's another, it's another way that we can connect with each other over the global community. I mean, science is literally the, like a global language when we're asking questions and same thing with technology as we're solving problems. I mean, these are outstretched arms reaching over countries, continents, borders, cultural differences. It, it's a, something that can unite us in our common humanity because of the questions that we're asking and the problems we're trying to solve. I just think that's a really beautiful thing as well. Absolutely. Well, International Space Station is still by far the biggest challenge we've collaborated on internationally to solve. Mm. Um, and when we work together, we can do so much more. So that's a really exciting thing about space as well. It's too big a challenge for anyone to take on by themselves. And I think on an individual level, I like to think about that whole um, level of why should we do space in a more of the space is for everyone. As a Western Australian, I like to say that space is closer to us than Albany is in Perth. Um, and that's because that's how far away the International Space Station is when it passes overhead. It's not very far at all. Um, and it's the same for anyone, anywhere on the planet. Wherever you are, space is equally above you. It's equally part of your life. Um, and we need to engage in that. Um, we, we have opportunity, but we also have responsibility. And, you know, I think that there's a lot of opportunity here to pursue real world problems, to contribute to real world solutions. And it doesn't have to be in 20 years or 30 years deep into your career. You can start looking at these problems now. Um, and that's why we want to do a high school thing. That's why universities should be engaged. We've got a responsibility for research and education. That's our core mission. And space is a massive area that needs exploration. It needs it needs to be understood and it needs to have uh, solutions found to, to help solve problems both in the future that we don't know about and problems we have now. It, I mean, it's, and we don't understand enough the effects that we have on the planet and from space we get a better perspective on, on us. We can see the way pollution evolves, we can see the way that cities spread over land, we can see light pollution at night and we don't even understand the influence of light pollution yet on nature. So. There's all these things that, with a, with a perspective from space, looking down on Earth, we have a much better understanding of, of our planet, and that can give us a much better strategy for how to take care of it. Absolutely. All these things we're talking about, they're not necessarily scientific problems. You know, they're political problems, they're sociological problems, mm. they're environmental problems. Communication problems. They're communication problems, mm. and so this is not just about <laughs> science. And, and car horns. Not just, <laughs> this is not just about science, this is about Humanity. humanities and, and so Hass can engage mm. in this and we need to communicate this and we need to capture the feelings of this, the, the significance of this and art comes into that, mm. media comes into that. Um, all of these areas that we learn about all, all can engage in space and help solve these problems. It's not just a science problem, that's such a small slice of the pie. Mm. I mean, even in the last few years with the Binar Space Program and looking at how people have come together and, and, and solved a, a particular problem um, in, you know, how do we get to space and, and what do we want to do when we get there? Um, being able to see that in its, um, from its infancy to the program as it is now and as we reach out um, and get more, um, more of the community involved um, and show the pathways to get involved. Um, that's a really special thing as well. Yeah, absolutely. For me, um, working on the Binar Space Program, we weren't the first people to make a satellite <laughs> a, a university, not by a long shot. There's been hundreds of universities yeah. making, making stuff. Um, but for us, we were the first ones here and we had a lot less uh, we don't have the same sort of, oh, just drive around the corner to another major city and see what they did. Um, we're very far away even from the Australian cities. And uh, I think really the drive for Binar X is that in other places there's opportunities. There's opportunities to um, work with NASA in the US and ESA in Europe. And there's opportunities for kids to get involved from primary school and high school projects working with NASA engineers. And, we don't have that here, but we have an opportunity as a university working on this to share that experience with everyone. And so I think WA Kids should be working on space projects and we have a responsibility to share what we're doing and so that's what we're doing here.